a good good segue. This is part two of Keenan's talk. And really, I'm just going to focus on the results of the uh, Hanger experiment that was implemented in large part uh, because of Jay Barlow in 1996 and 1997. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge that you know this was a, a large effort um, done with the regional office uh, and the take reduction team and the fishermen. And, you know, we needed buy-in from the fishermen to get these data. So like Tina alluded to, we do have a long history of observer data in this fishery. It, it's a wonderful data set. It's, uh, over 8,000 observed sets now, representing collectively probably 15% of all the estimated fishing effort during that period. Uh, history in this fishery did not start in 1990, though. The fishery began in the mid-1970s as somewhat of an experiment when fishermen using smaller mesh net discovered um, that they could catch thresher shark while they were targeting uh, white sea bass uh, and yellowtail. This is a, uh, just a visual summary of the uh, cetacean bycatch rate from 1990 through 2009, uh, showing in red the years uh, relatively high rates without pingers in the fishery. And then we had the two year period in gray of the experiment um, where we had both sets with and without pingers outfitted. Uh, and that gray uh, includes both sets with and without pingers. And then, and then the green um, is all the sets where mandatory tinger use has been implemented over the years. Uh, and there's a lot of interannual variability in the bycatch rates, but you can see in general the, the bycatch rates have been much lower uh, during the period of tinger use. More explicitly, the real litmus test species for this fishery is the short beak common dolphin. This is a species we most commonly take. Um, and this is just a simple uh, representation of the bycatch rates um, in sets with pingers in green and without pingers in red. It's a simple bootstrap resampling of those data to give you an idea of the variability of the bycatch rates for those two periods. And you can see without, uh, once pingers were, were used, um, we've reduced bycatch by about 50%. Even more dramatic results and, and somewhat unexpected uh, were found over the long term for uh, beaked whales. Uh, prior to pinger use, we would entangle about one beaked whale in every hundred sets fished. Uh, and you can see in the left panel, during that period 1990 to 95, we entangled 33 animals in approximately 3,000 sets. The success of pingers in reducing beak whale bycatch kind of crept up on us slowly, um, year by year, until we realized some years ago, hey, we haven't seen a beak whale caught in this fishery in a very long time. Well, you know what's going on here? And we still have sightings of beak whales out there. We still have strandings, so we know they're there. And I think really this result highlights just how sensitive beak whales are to anthropogenic sound. Uh, maybe even more so than we had previous thought, previously thought. And it was sort of an unintended bonus that we got out of this fishery data, getting new insight into beak dwell sensitivity to sound. California sea lion entanglements, we kind of scratched our head over because we saw the opposite pattern. Uh, higher bycatch rates in the era of pinger use. Now a couple of things are going on here. Uh, sea lion populations have been increasing, um, dramatically so, 7 or 8 percent per year. Um, there has also been a shift in the fishery to the southeast corner of the, the um, state where sea lions are much more abundant. So you have a higher potential for interaction between the sea lions and, and the, the vessels. This prompted us to look at the potential dinner bell effect of pingers, were pingers attracting the sea lions to the nets where they would prey on, on the swordfish in the net. And it's been somewhat of a problem in this fishery because you've, you've got anywhere between 10 and 30 percent 
of the set uh, of the swordfish catch being depredated upon by sea lions. And they, they really do quite a bit of damage to the catch, as you can see here. So we did some modeling um, using classification trees to look at different variables related to depredation of swordfish catch. Uh, we used a total of 20 variables. Um, and the short story was we found out that how many pingers you used on a net was not important in terms of predicting depredation. In fact, it was no more important than random numbers um, and some of the other unimportant variables were did you use sonar on your vessel? Did you leave your main, main engine on all night while you were fishing? The important variables turned out to be how many swordfish did you have in your net that really tended to attract the uh, sea lions. Uh, also, where you fished and when you fished there were supremely important, uh, especially if you fished inshore uh, of the Channel Islands where sea lions were most abundant. Uh, and another one that kind of surprised us, but is somewhat intuitive, is uh, we have data on whether or not captains leave their deck light on at night, and that seemed to be uh, quite a good predictor of depredation. So we were able, through this process of reducing bycatch, not only to provide bycatch reduction, but also collect a lot of good data on just basic fishing activity and provide useful information to the fishermen. This slide is mainly to remind me that probably the most important thing about this observer program is that the fishery went on for quite a few years before 1990, before we had a chance to observe it. Um, and it's important to know what's going on in your backyard, even if your backyard is as big as Southern California. And I, I think you know that's where the focus of conservation needs to be: is just, hey, what's going on, um, and getting you know that partnership between observers and fishermen um, and conservation groups. I think is is uh, very important, so we can be aware of what is going on. Thanks. Any questions for Jim? Yes. Is that card analysis? Do you have a publication on that right now, or is that yes. internal? Yeah. yeah, I can uh, give you that today if you'd like. Thanks. Thank you.